Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. Thomas left Bertie and made his way along the branch line towards the big station by the sea. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad. Percy goes to work at the harbour and I do his job here, there and everywhere. Take that! Ooh, groaned the trucks. Just you wait, we'll show you! Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James, if you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt trucks here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up! It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? He's sick replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I mean, I am, uh, stuttered James. I, I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. Gordon and James sniggered quietly to each other. Some of James's trucks were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stone from the quarry and then set off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Duck pulled away the trucks, and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered about the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A truck full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Toby's line crosses with the main road behind the station and for a short way follows a farm lane. Frosty weather makes the muddy lane rock hard and very slippery. Toby stops before reaching the lane. His fireman halts the traffic at the crossing and then he sets off again. By using the heavy trucks to push him along, he has no trouble with the frosty rails in the lane. It is the only safe thing to do in this kind of weather. Toby warned Mavis and told her just what to do. I can manage, thank you, she replied. I'm not an old fuss pot like you. The trucks were tired of being pushed around by Mavis. It's slippery, they whispered. Let's push her around instead. On, 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 they yelled. Mavis took no notice. Instead, she brought the trucks carefully down the lane and stopped at the level crossing. All traffic halted. One in the headlamp for Fosspot Toby, chortled Mavis. But Mavis had stopped in the wrong place. Instead of taking Toby's advice, she had given the trucks the chance they wanted. Hold back, hold back, they cried. Grrr, up, ordered Mavis. The trucks just laughed and her wheels spun helplessly. Workmen sanded the rails and tried to dig away the frozen mud, but it was no good. Everyone was impatient. Grrr, ah, wailed Mavis. Toby was in the yard when he heard the news. I warned her, he fumed. She's young yet, soothed his driver, and she can manage her trucks herself, interrupted Toby. They're your trucks, really, his driver replied. Mavis is supposed to stay at the quarry. If the fat controller finds out, 
Hmm, yes, said Toby thoughtfully. He and his driver agreed that it would be best to help Mavis after all. An angry farmer was telling Mavis just what she could do with her train. Having trouble, Mavis? chortled Toby. I am surprised. Grush, said Mavis. With much puffing and wheel slip, Toby pushed Mavis and the trucks back. The hard work made his fire burn fiercely and his firemen spread hot cinders to melt the frozen mud. The siding arrangements were awkward. To put the trucks where Toby wanted them, Mavis had to make several journeys. She started making a plan. If we use the teeniest bit of Toby's line, we would save all this bother. Her driver, suspecting nothing, allowed them to go as far as the first level crossing. A few days later, the weather changed. As the snow melted, the quarry grew busy again. Some trains were so long that Mavis had to go beyond the level crossing. Now for her plan. She would go further down the line without it seeming her fault. Can you keep a secret? She asked the trucks. Yes, 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 they chattered. Will you bump me at the level crossing and tell no one I asked you? The trucks promised. But whilst Mavis was away, Toby arrived. He decided to shunt the trucks himself. The trucks decided to bump him anyway. They reached the level crossing and Toby's brakes came on. This was the signal for the trucks. On, 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 they yelled. Toby was away with the trucks screaming and yelling behind him. No one realised that melted snow had turned a stream into a torrent and the bridge above it was about to collapse. The rails were now like a tightrope across the thundering water. Stop! Stop! cried Toby. His driver fought for control. They came nearer and nearer to the bridge. The driver braked hard. Toby stopped, still on the rails, but with his wheels treading the tightrope over the abyss. Mavis was horrified and quickly came to the rescue. Workmen anchored Toby with chains while she pulled the trucks away. Then, she helped Toby to safety. I'm sorry about the trucks, said Mavis. I can't think how you managed to stop them in time. Oh, well... The silly engines were flattered. He has very good manners, they murmured. We are pleased to have him in our yard. Duck had his doubts. Come on, he said. Diesel purred after him. You're worthy, fat. Sir Topham had to you, ordered Duck. Diesel looked hurt. You're worthy, Sir Topham Hat thinks I need to learn. He is mistaken. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We come to a yard and improve it. We are revolutionary. Oh, said Duck, if you're Revo Thinger Gummy, perhaps you would collect my trucks while I fetch Gordon's coaches. Diesel, delighted to show off, purred away. When Duck returned, Diesel was trying to take some trucks from a siding. They were old and empty. They had not been touched for a long time. Diesel found them hard to move. Pull! 
Push! Backwards! Forwards! Oi! Oh! The truck's grown. We can't! We won't! Duck watched with interest. Diesel lost patience. Grr, grr. He roared. Gave a great heave. The trucks get forward. Oh, oh! They screamed. We can't! We won't! Some of their brakes snapped and the gear jammed in the sleepers. Grr, grr. Oh. Ho, ho, ho! Chuckled Duck. Diesel recovered and tried to push the trucks back, but they wouldn't move. Duck ran quietly round to collect the other trucks. Thank you for arranging these, Diesel. I must go now. Don't you want this lot? No, thank you. Diesel gulped. And I've taken all this trouble. Why didn't you tell me? You never asked me. Besides, said Duck, you were having such fun being Rev whatever it was you said. Goodbye. <laughs> Diesel had to help the workmen clear the mess. He hated it. All the trucks were laughing and singing at him. Trucks are waiting in the yard, packing them with easel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, up goes the diesel. Growled Diesel and scuttled away to sulk in the shed. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. Suddenly, it was a guard's warning whistle. Hurrah, 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 laughed the trucks. We've broken away, we've broken away. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled. Hurry, Duck, hurry, said the driver. They raced through Edward Station. But the trucks were catching up as fast as we can. Then they'll catch us gradually. The driver was gaining control. Another clear mile and we'll do it. Oh, glory, look at that. James was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. Any minute there could be a crash. It's up to you now, Duck, cried the driver. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. It's too late, Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He veered into a siding where a barber had set up shop. He was shaving a customer. The silly trucks had knocked their guard off his van and left him far behind after he had whistled a warning. But the trucks didn't care. They were feeling very pleased with themselves. <laughs> Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. Excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber. You frighten my customers. I'll teach you. And he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. Thomas was helping to pull the trucks away when the fat controller arrived. <laughs> I do not like engines popping through my walls, fumed the barber. I appreciate your feelings, said the fat controller, but you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. It was a very close, um, shave. Oh, said the barber. Oh, excuse me. He filled a basin of water to wash Duck's face. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were being a brave engine. That's all right, sir. I didn't know that either. You were very brave indeed, said the Fat Controller. I'm proud of you. The Fat Controller watched the rescue operation. Then he had more news for Duck. And when you are properly washed and mended, you are coming home. Home, sir? Do you mean the yard? Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. The engines are sorry and want you back. Thomas grew crosser and crosser. Time's time, he grumbled. Why should I keep my passengers waiting while Henry and James dawdle about all day on viaducts? Don't blame me, snorted Henry. 
If we hurried across the viaduct, it might collapse. And then you'd have no passengers at all. What would you do then? Run my train on time, for one thing, retorted Thomas. He hurried away before Henry could answer. Bertie was impatient too. He was timed to arrive just after Thomas. His passengers found that instead of going straight from the bus to their train, they were kept waiting till Thomas arrived. Soon Bertie grew cross with Thomas. Late again, he remarked, as Thomas panted wearily in. We may be friends, but I thought you could go fast, Thomas. It's time we had another race. I reckon I could beat you now. Thomas let off steam loudly. Rubbish, he hissed fiercely. It's those main line engines. They dither about on their viaduct and then blame the fat controller's workmen. It's just an excuse for laziness, if you ask me. One day, James was later than ever at the junction. I'm sorry, Thomas, he puffed. I was held up at the station and the viaduct made it worse. It's lucky for you I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Before James could answer, he puffed importantly away. Come along, come along, he panted to the coaches. Annie and Claravel did their best, but Thomas soon found that he couldn't save much time. Suddenly, Thomas saw Bertie ahead. His radiator was steaming. What's the matter? asked Thomas. You should be at the station by now. You're late. I feel dreadful, moaned Bertie, all upset inside, and driver says he can't make me better. Thank goodness you're late too. Can you take my passengers, please? They'll never get home otherwise. Of course, agreed Thomas. He now felt sorry for Bertie and promised to get help at the next station. Thomas set off again. Already he felt much more cheerful, and Bertie's passengers, travelling in Annie and Clarabel, all reached home safely. Until one day Donald had an accident. The rails were slippery. He couldn't stop in time. The fat controller was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I did not expect such, um, clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I'm sorry, sir, said Donald. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. Now James will have to help with the goods work, while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. The fat controller was right. James grumbled dreadfully. Anyone would think, said Douglas, that Donald had his accident on purpose. I heard tell about an engine and some tar wagons. Shut up, said James. It's not funny. He didn't like to be reminded of his own accident. Well, 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 said Douglas. Surely, James, it wasn't a you. You didn't say. James didn't say. He slouched sulkily away. He's cross, sniggered the spiteful brake van. We'll try to make him crosser still. Hold back, giggled the trucks to each other. James did his best, but he was exhausted when they reached Edward Station. Luckily, Douglas was there. Help me up the hill, please, <sighs> panted James. These trucks are playing tricks. We'll show them, said Douglas. Slowly but surely, the snorting engines forced the trucks up the hill. 
but James was losing steam. I can't do it! I can't do it! Lay it to me! shouted Douglas. The guard was anxious. Go steady! The van's breaking! The van was in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Edward came to clear the mess. The fat controller was on board. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Douglas was grand, sir, said Edward. James had no steam left, but Douglas worked hard enough for three. I heard him from my yard. Two would have been enough, said the fat controller. Presently, they came to a drift which was larger than most. They charged it and were just backing for another try when... Lush sakes, Donald! It's Henry! Dinner, not fetch yourself, Henry! Wait a while. We'll have you out. Henry was very grateful. He saw all was not well. The twins were glum. They told him that the fat controller was returning soon. He'll send us back for sure. It's a shame, said Percy. A lot of nonsense about a broken signal box, grumbled Gordon. That spiteful brake van too, put in James. Good riddance, that's what I say. They were splendid in the snow, added Henry. It isn't fair. They all agreed that something must be done, but none knew what. Percy decided to talk to Edward about it. What you need, said Edward, is a deputation. He explained what that was. Percy ran back quickly. Edward says we need a, a deposition. Of course said Gordon. The question is, what is a desperation, asked Henry. It's when engines tell the fat controller something's wrong, said Percy. Did you say tell the fat controller, asked Duck thoughtfully. There was a long silence. I propose, said Gordon, that Percy be our, um, disputation. Hi, squeaked Percy. I can't. Rubbish, Percy, said Henry. It's easy. That's settled then, said Gordon. Poor Percy wished it wasn't. Hello, Percy. It's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Uh, ye yes, yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? Please, sir, they've made me a desperation, sir, to speak to you, sir. I don't like it, sir. The fat controller pondered. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? Yes, sir, please, sir. It's Donald and Douglas, sir. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Please, sir, don't send them away. Thank you, Percy. That will do. Later, the fat controller spoke to the engines. I had a deputation. I understand your feelings, but I do not approve of interference. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver said I could manage without him. I'll just go out. Then I'll stop and wheesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever. Really, he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his control. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors! cried Thomas and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. 
Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More pasta fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Meanwhile, Donald and Douglas arrived. Don't fash yourself, Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails, they laughed. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You are a very naughty engine. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. A d d diesel, sir? Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Daisy was hard to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. This is dreadfully smelly. I'm highly sprung, and anything smelly is bad for my swerves. Next, they tried the carriage shed. This is better said Daisy, but whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie Clarabel and Henrietta, who were most offended. We won't stay here to be insulted, they fumed. Percy and Toby had to take them away and spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. The engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. Ooh, ooh, she tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the passengers. I am the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabel now. The passengers waited for Daisy to start, but she didn't. She saw that a milk fan was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with trucks. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense, said her driver. Come on now, back down. Daisy lurched backwards. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, she said, and stopped. Everyone argued with her, but it was no use. It's fit as orders, she said. What is? My fitter's a very nice man. He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung and pulling is bad for your swerves. So that's how it is, finished Daisy. One day, Toby brought Henrietta to the station where Percy was grumpily shunting. Hello, Percy. I see Daisy's left the milk again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose. Anyone would think I'd nothing to do, grumbled Percy. Tell you what, replied Toby, I'll take the milk, you fetch my trucks. Their drivers and the station master agreed.
Percy had never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the trucks about. Hurry along, he said. The trucks grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out. Pay Percy out. Come along, Puff Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly, they saw a notice ahead. All trains stop to pin down brakes. Peep, peep, peep! Brakes, guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. Frantically trying to grip the rails, Percy slid into the yard. Peep, peep! Look out! The brake van was in smithereens. Percy's driver and fireman had jumped clear, but Percy was stranded. Next day, the fat controller arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of trucks. We must now try, said the fat controller, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament. I am sorry, sir, replied Percy. You can stay there till we are ready. Perhaps it will teach you to be careful with trucks. Percy sighed. The trucks groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. Bill and Ben are tank engine twins. Each has four wheels, a tiny chimney and dome, and a small squat cab. Their trucks are filled with china clay. It is needed for pottery, paper, paint, and many other things. The twins are now kept busy pulling the trucks for engines on the main line and for ships in the harbour. One morning, they arranged some trucks and went away for more. They returned to find them all gone. The twins were most surprised. Their drivers examined a patch of oil. That's a diesel, they said. It's a wattle, asked Bill. A diesel, I think, replied Ben. There's a notice about them in our shed. Coughs and sneezels spread diseasels. You had a cough in your smoke box yesterday. It's your fault the diseasel came. It isn't, it is. Stop arguing, you two, laughed their drivers. Let's go and rescue our trucks. Bill and Ben were horrified. But the diseasel will magic us away like the trucks. He won't magic us, replied their drivers. We'll more likely magic him. Listen, he doesn't know your twins, so we'll take away your names and numbers, and then this is what we'll do. Puffing hard, the twins set off on their journey to find the diesel. They were looking forward to playing tricks on him. Creeping into the yard, they found the diesel on a siding with the missing trucks. Ben hid behind, but Bill went boldly alongside. Diesel looked up. Do you mind? Yes, said Bill, I do. I want my trucks, please. These are mine, said the Diesel. Go away. Bill pretended to be frightened. You're a big bully, he whimpered. You'll be sorry. 
He ran back and hid behind the trucks on the other side. Ben now came forward. Truck stealer! This Ben, he ran away too. Bill took his place. <laughs>